And we started with a butcher shop, um, and Karachi painted butchers. He'd also written butchers and children, and he also painted uh, monkeys. So I thought, well, I'll put, have a child and a monkey in it. Um, and they did um, turn out, I think, very good in the, in the piece, but they were a little bit more. A late 16th century Italian painter who was a pioneer of um, the painting of everyday life, genre painting. And uh, he was related to some, some butchers. He had butchers in the family and painted a few uh, images of them at work. And Philip has used his, um, his uh, activities in that kind of line as a kind of um, contrast to his, his personality in, the way, in a way, because he was a very high-minded, rather melancholy individual who also painted very classical compositions. And uh, you'll see there are moments in the film, for example, when he, he looks at these very ordinary guys, the butchers, and he imagines them as classical figures, heroic figures in, uh, in poses that look like they come from ancient Greek or Romans. Film installations are not merely documentaries. Not that there's anything wrong with documentaries, but Philip has taken a very different, much more um, poetical and imaginative approach. Oh, the, but let me say a word about the music, too, in this one. This, Gorgeous music is by Angelo Badalamenti, who is uh, a, probably fami a familiar name to some of you from his work with the, the director David Lynch. Ah. skeletons warming themselves. The, um, don't have to have any butchers in it. Um, but I, in researching it, um, I read that Ensor's grandmother, who was uh, um, very influential um, in, in uh, making him become the sort of painter he became, um, had a monkey. Well, I had a monkey, so we brought back Katie. And in fact, Katie is in three of the pieces. She, uh, um, although she's not the star of all the installations, she certainly figures largely. And then you'll see there are many children in the 250 actors in this piece. Um, as I said, many, many animals, uh, wine and stuff. This vase is um, from the 5th century BC, and it's, uh, it deals with a common kind of um, elemental opposition that you find in Greek culture between the Dionysiac, in other words, the kind of instinctual animal side of human nature, uh, as, a, as opposed to the more civilized side of, of life. Um, and what you'll see in the film is that uh, Philip uh, sets up a sort of panoramic picture of the Dionysiac and then shows how it plays out uh, in contest with a more logical, rational outlook on life um, in personified by this character Pentheus. The film is presented on a disc in the Kimball Theatre, um, seemingly floating. I approach this piece as how do you make a Greek vase film? Well, I think you've got to make you, you've got to give it the impression that it's a Greek vase, hence the circularity of the um, of the image. 
Um, and um, as Malcolm mentioned, the inspiration of this piece is both the wonderful Morris Cup that the museum has, but um, also Bay's painting and Greek culture in general. Now, you'll see there are many, many images of people often, for some people back where do these images come from? Well, um, I, I must confess, they come from many Greek vases that I've seen. So, um, one of the pleasures of making these films is to sort of celebrate the artists who made them. So I feel in some way I was trying to channel Doris, the painter of this cup, and you'll see Doris in the piece.